we're back to uh, Thomas Square with Occupy Honolulu. This is day 157 and raid 13. <laughs> yeah, they're back again. Today they're actually, uh, looks like they're just uh, tagging again because, well, We've beat them at their own games, so they can't take anything. Looks so nice on YouTube, I think. My flight is done, thank you. not been here 24 hours. Take a picture of that one. <laughs> <laughs> Get her done, no fun, John. That's a pretty tame nickname. I don't know, I think we need to zoom in on him. That's kind of an invasion of privacy, just to wander up and start taking pictures of people's private property and stuff. I don't know. There is no reason to constitute. See, now we got to transfer bodily fluids. <laughs> oh. <laughs> if you can't break tape, then bring some freaking scissors. Really? <laughs> I didn't think Hawaii was made up of hillbillies. I don't know what the fuck that... <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> Well, the raids are much quicker now since they can't just take anything. <laughs> See what they do to those ones down there? Yeah, that's what I did last time. Oh my. This is pitiful. How many times are you going to show up somewhere and not do anything? <laughs>
Okay, so now we're in like we always do. They start chasing down the houseless. I guess there's something wrong with staying dry. Well, no, it's just easier to harass someone than it is to help someone. <laughs> yeah, it's true. <laughs> We have on this island uh, over 6,000 people houseless on this little tiny island. And uh, over 30% of them is Hawaiians themselves. And uh, the state doesn't care. <laughs> doesn't care about their own people, doesn't care about what's happened to their culture, doesn't care about what's right or wrong, is definitely not a care in the world about what the United States has has to say or stands up for. It, so, you know, the, the state is so backwards. You know, let's say uh, we're for the Hawaiian Kingdom, and then throw a third of the, <laughs> the Hawaiians out on the street and kick them out of their own historical parks that their own heritage and families owned way before anybody you else you stepped can't here. Carry your shit with you. Are there, are there any you guys or let's say we're there. part of the United States and just Where are they now? throw any and everyone out on the street because they don't have money. Uh, you know, it's like, well, let's see, everybody took care of themselves before without money on this island. Now, uh, you know, it's just gotten so dang outrageous. Even some of the rich are having trouble to maintain maintain themselves on this island. Wonder that people are cynical about that. So I don't know. It the government officials here have got to figure out whose side they're on and what they're here for. I mean, the only thing I can see that they're here for is corporations. Like they just got done paying. Uh, millions out so they can uh, bring affordable housing to the island. 12,000 homes at 600,000 apiece. I don't know what's affordable about that unless you live in California, New York, or now Hawaii. <laughs> and it's still not just affordable. Most of the population here can't even touch that kind of money for a house, let alone uh, do anything. They say, oh, there's plenty of people that owns them. Well, yeah, they their parents parents own the houses and it keeps getting passed down because there's no way in hell anybody could afford just to buy them and 300 a month for a month for a cot in a dormitory is just a profitable uh, enterprise yeah they they charge in upwards of $300 a month if you want to live in a shelter that leaks has bugs you deal with thefts, overcrowding, disease, uh, rules that is way beyond any anything that an adult should have to actually worry about. I mean, there has to be standards to maintain, but what they got going on is you might as well just throw yourself in jail because you can't do anything, and they don't take care of you. They, 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 don't, they don't do nothing besides break you down to the point where uh, if you didn't have mental issues... You're you're definitely getting them now if you stay there too long. Oh hell! Overall, just taking a grand little tour. This is the most pitiful thing I've ever seen. Now, see, look at we're using standard cars now. Another uh, you streamer. Hey, <laughs> <pineapple glitches. laughs> I got a point. Yeah. Of don't have any 
Right. But we're using normal vehicles to drive up on. Quick to the bat symbol. <laughs> Yeah, because then they might just sell it to the prisoners. <laughs> I mean, so far we've proven their system to be corrupt. They, they. <laughs> yeah, they're. The, yeah, they, they they sell stuff in their prisons, they keep stuff for themselves, they conveniently lose stuff. You have a good old man. Alright, you too, bro. Take care. You too. I mean, now, it's like that. I mean, these officers here wasn't trying to pick on anything, but it, it's the whole system here is just jacked up. They got... They didn't get... Yeah. They didn't... Um, okay, wait, I'm going to ask right now. You know, a lot of people out there believe this is, uh, we're against individuals or whatever. Not against the individuals, I mean, against what the government's actually doing. You know, they all have a job to do, but there's certain members within this group that was even here today that is doing stuff way beyond their job. They're doing stuff for personal gain. And, uh, that's a real issue. I owe that a new cunt. I can hear genuine things when I hear it. Yeah, just set up your ass. <laughs> oh, jeez. Oh yeah, definitely. And the way it works is that it's not it's not in the criminal code. So police come, but they say they're just here to shoot the police. And it's the Department of uh, Facilities Management that uh, actually does the tagging and the confiscation. Yeah, you, you can't blame the police. I mean, because they're not doing anything wrong, but the problem is, is they're not doing anything at all. They're not doing anything. <laughs> you know? And we've had stuff seen that was not subject to seizure, that was not tagged, and uh, police won't intercede in the sense of our problems. It's not going to be the law that's probably going to be a little bit. What the hell? I just left, I was like halfway up the hill with like Michael Collins. So what? I just walked up the street. Oh. Huh. I still haven't been here for a minute. This is just another tag. Well, well, no, see, now you, now you gotta understand, this is definitely the starting of another raid. Right. You know, I mean, it was a finish. They already, well, see, they already know they can't take anything. They're done showing up here with all their equipment because it is costing them too much. So, you know, we're, we're starting on raid 13 now. It's just the first part of it. <laughs> they finished it off because they came back 24 hours later, and yet again, they can't take some. This makes the third time that they've come to raid, you know, to where they were going to confiscate stuff and hasn't been able to. They probably saw the red tents and they just decided to tag red tents along the blue tents so they take it all next time. Well, that's what they're trying to do. I mean, but 
it's not very effective. I got a problem with uh, what they were doing to uh, this gentleman here. I don't want to fit him being mobile with his own equipment. He had uh, a tent on his uh, hand dolly. Isn't that what this you call this? A hand dolly? Yeah, a I believe dolly. that's you, I believe that's you guys call it. A hand right? truck or a dolly? Yeah, a hand, yeah. This hand dolly he had a tent that's on there with a few of his other items. And uh, they decided to uh, uh, basically tag him <laughs> because uh, they didn't like the fact that uh, he had uh, items on there that they would want to claim. Well, sorry, it's mobile. There's nothing illegal about carrying stuff. Uh, yeah. So that, that that was a personal attack on him, I felt. that. I mean, there's no legal right. For them to go chasing someone down to try and give them a tag to warn them of something that he can legally do no matter what anybody has to say. You know, I mean, it's definitely within natural law to believe that you have the right of mobility. Natural law says you have the right to your own things. Uh, whatever, you know, it, it's... These guys are idiots. And that's where Wesley Chung... Uh, he, he was the aggressor for that one. That's the problem that we have with him. You know, it's and, and then you have the PD that does nothing about it. They feel that chasing people down and uh, harassing them is legal. And then you ask them, they're like, "Well, no, it's not." Then why y'all allow it? That's where the problem lies with the local police department. Is that they're trying to keep their hands clean the whole time. You know, they're not going to do something. Because, I mean, a lot of them ha actually have some respect for us. But at the same time, they have their jobs to worry about. So it, it, I know they're under some weird things. But, yeah, this somebody's going to have to start stepping up and doing something here. But, you know, I guess that's why we're out on the street. is because we started to step up. <laughs> so, do you have anything to say? You, earlier, you started to take off about uh you know uh the domiciles and what's your whole out uh, outlook on this well i have a number a number of opinions on the whole subject uh for them to for them to tag the tent it's just conspiracy to come back later and commit the crime of taking people's domiciles uh, taking taking people's property um, there's not much to say to their tagging today. You know that that isn't a crime in and of itself. It's what they it's what they're setting up to do that's it, uh, really interesting. Shouldn't be taken from the from the least fortunate in society. They use a whole bunch of money and labor, and then they go home to their nice homes and. Uh, they don't really care. They, I noticed they didn't have any social workers with them today. No, and no, they necessary. promised yesterday that there would be someone that was here today. They did make that yeah, promise? Yeah, they made a promise yesterday. Well, Bill 1129 of Bill 54 and, and, and Ordinance 1129 both state that the main purpose is to help the homeless. Or, or yeah, they, they make the claim that they are here to help the homeless. There wasn't a social worker in the whole bunch. Nobody helping direct people to appropriate social organizations, no offers of assistance for the homeless, they're just setting up to take homes away from people. You know, the, what little shelter the homeless have, they're setting up to take it away. Right. It's, uh, shame. It's shame. Have you heard what's going on in uh, Wall Street lately with uh, the houseless and some of the occupiers? They're, uh, they've taken to the sidewalks also, and, uh, Basically, the same thing as what we're doing it here, but they've taken to extremes where they're actually right up against the buildings. And I uh, found out uh, if it's still a walkway, it's a public right of way for travel. Well, there is a federal. There was a federal judge that said that it is uh, freedom of uh, expression, which is freedom of uh, speech to sleep on the sidewalks, and with uh, freedom of travel on a public transportation way like a sidewalk. Doesn't matter who owns that sidewalk. 
it was meant for public use. They had the right to sleep there, and they're sleeping right up against buildings now. Well, it's not very comfortable, but it is positive from one aspect, is that they're going, especially if those buildings are banks or some of the institutions that are responsible for putting this country in this mess, some of the large corporations that are in the, in the corporate uh, atmosphere that's responsible. The sociopathic cor corporate atmosphere that's responsible for putting much of us in this this mess. Sociopathic. There's there's no there's no empathy for people in in a corporate profit mode. All in, in the corporation, all there is is profit mode. You know that's that's the one goal. The there's no um, judgment center in a corporation. There's no. There's no empathy for people. That that all falls by the wayside when everything is for the for the end of profit. And all right. That's well, that, we're out that's, here. that's what capitalism is. Capitalism is based off of profits and the freedom to rise and fall, no matter big or small. But they have no no uh, section in there for humanity. You know, like uh, some of the more socialist type of countries. Even though they're capitalists, they they. they say it, humanity is number one first you know the cut the, a piece of the pie is given to humanity before anybody can start doing anything you know and that's what America differs they, they make capitalism perfected and we're seeing that today as uh, you know the the difference between the poor and the rich is gaining more you know a bigger and bigger uh, distance between each other Capitalism never pretended, never even pretended to be about people. I mean, the word capital is another word for money. It's building money off of money. So capitalism is no way to treat people. Capitalism is just about making money. If you let capitalism run our country, then it's completely sociopathic because it's, it's antithetic to the purposes of the people in so many, in so many ways. We're seeing one of them right now. What would you do different than uh, if you were a city, you know, or a small town, or you know, a country, whatever? It doesn't matter. What would you do to try to uh, solve the problem with the houseless while giving respect to the people that was lucky enough to have a good enough job to afford six hundred thousand plus homes? Where you know, I mean, as we know, the average home on the islands is around a million dollars right now. Like I, I mean, stated earlier, there were no there were no social workers among these among these cops here today. Nobody here to help. This was supposed to be a preparatory meeting. Okay, they're not preparing to help people. They're preparing to make them more homeless than they already are. Okay, there should be people. <laughs> maybe, maybe five social workers. I mean, there's especially down the way there. There's like genuine homeless people who need help. They need they need a place. They need a, a, a starting off point, and there's ways to do that. The city's not even pretending to do any of that. Okay. There, there should be, like I said, social workers, people who, to direct them to a way to get out of out of the mess. Because just taking their homes isn't going to make them not be homeless anymore. That doesn't make any sense. Well, it creates thieves. When you, when you take their homes and you take their property and their basic needs to survive or take care of themselves, and they have no other means to be able to reproduce those items, you know, recover or or gain a legal means of being able to recover those items, and, well, you created a thief. There's nothing more cynical than taking from the least fortunate society. Right. Yeah, well, you know, I mean, they say they're fixing the problem, though. They say that there's less uh, homeless seen, but, uh, I mean, do you believe that they've actually so gotten people, people off the street? See, they don't have to see the unfortunate on the way home. Is that, is that, a, positive, is that a positive step for society? So, that people don't have to look at what's going on? People don't have to look at what uh, our capitalistic, capitalistic corporatism is creating. Yeah. It leaves people behind. The bigger a corporation gets, the more off, more, uh, the more they're likely to ship jobs overseas. Okay, but in our in our system, capitalism, building money off of money, building money off of existing money. The more money you have, the more you can build upon it. It completely leaves the people behind. You 
know, especially the least fortunate people. Okay? Capitalism is no way to to run a society, and yet that's what we're doing. Thank you, sir. Right. Uh, Doug, yeah. do you do you happen to remember the name of the the senator that has his uh, personal bank account in the Central Pacific Bank? Yeah, Dan Inouye. Dan Inouye? Inouye is a senior senator from Hawaii, a very senior senator. Um, Central Pacific Bank, is that what we're talking about? Yeah, well, I wanted to bring up what he was talking about. It goes along the lines of what we have for uh, a senator, where uh, it's been... Uh, Rumored, I guess you want to say, it hasn't been fully confirmed because, of course, he is going to get out on national TV and just publicly tell everybody. But, uh, you know, it could be uh, that, yeah. that it's rumored that his plan is to basically, and along with other people of power, is to get rid of all the people that don't have money, that can't afford a million dollars for a home, that can't afford to drive their Porsches and nice cars and this and that, and just get rid of them so they create a society of just the rich here in Hawaii. Right. Actually, Hawaii has the highest average uh, home loan amount, close to seven hundred thousand dollars. Median price of a, of a home in Hawaii. I got to move over. The lighting's uh, all screwed up. You can't see it. It's upward of six hundred thousand dollars, and that doesn't necessarily get you the actual property because we have a system called leasehold, which means you're really renting the property. For that, you get a house for six hundred thousand dollars. If the pay here were equal to that, then it'd be okay. But of course it's not. You know, tourism creates a lot of service type jobs, ma uh, maids and uh, wait waiters, that kind of stuff. So, um, you know, there's no equity in that. The thing with Dan Hinoe and Central Pacific Bank is that they originally didn't qualify for top part, uh, troubled assets, relief program funds. And then, a so goes the story, which, which I believe, but I can't say it's fact. Danny Noe makes a phone call and says, well, this is my bank, bro. You know, you gotta, like, you gotta tarp it up. So it's got $135 million, which is actually small under the TARP program. The, what they did is they sell the stock to the Treasury, gave them $135 million. The Treasury just um, had to sell the stock, and they took a $60 million loss on it. So... That's money that's gone forever, yet they have mortgages that they're holding and they're foreclosing on. To me, that seems very unfair. That's probably the hard thing. Well, that, that's my problem with the banking system themselves is, okay, so they were doing what, you know, is a maybe an unethical way of business, but it was legal. There was no real, there was no, yeah, there was no law saying that they couldn't do some of the stuff that they were doing, but it was just unethical. And for this this guy, he's one of the banks that says, okay, um, he, he's actually worse in my opinion because he knew he didn't qualify, his bank didn't qualify, and if it's true that he made that phone call because he's a senator and says, hey man, I need my bank, you know, to survive here, I like my bank here in Hawaii, and uh, they take and give him, you know, these bailouts to help him out. I think that Occupy movement that there's uh, too much influence of banks that, that kind of financial sector uh, corporate influence on government. And there's none for the people on that other corner that don't have anything. They take their homes but give millions to banks. Right. Yeah, yeah, that's, it's, yeah it doesn't make any sense. I mean, they, they got paid. That, well, you know, and, and then we had that uh, one bank that uh, uh, the judge here in Hawaii ended up... Uh, dismissing a foreclosure case because I mean basically I mean there's a bunch of riffraff that goes with it but basically it was uh, he considered the whole process of what the bank's been doing all over the country as a game yeah. you know and it was cheating people and it was you know and he just wasn't having it and I thought that was pretty good how he just said you know we're not going to allow it dismiss it you know I mean that, that, that was pretty stand up I was glad to see that Hawaii somebody in Hawaii with power actually stood up and said for the little guy and said, you know what? Oh yeah, yeah. He let it. He let it go. Basically, uh, you know about uh, if I got the story correct, it's uh, deals with insurance. The bank was already paid off, so they couldn't prove that they had ownership of the property anymore. Because as you know, if say you wreck your car yeah. and total it, and the bank pays, you know, the insurance company pays you for it, whose car is that now? Right, right. It's the insurance company. 
Well, this bank dealt with a few different people, got paid a few different ways, and here they're trying to foreclose on people. Right. The, the house was paid over many right. times over. I see. I get the logic. Yeah, and so he's like, uh, you don't have ownership, and yeah. you can't prove who does because, you know, I mean, they could go after the bank as for insurance fraud if they wanted. Right, right. You know, so basically it's just dismissed. Yeah, that was a good little twist there. It's the only one that I know of in the country so far. Wow. So, all right. Well, I'm going to, we got a whole bunch of time on here over half an hour, so I'm going to get out of here. All right. Yeah, all right. This is Nova. I'll talk to you guys later. Okay.